Our first model is the Cournot model or Cournot duopoly. Um, so here is the model specific assumptions. Um, there are two firms. I'm going to call them firm one and firm two. All right. And each firm chooses their strategy is to choose capacity or quantity. So we denote it by Q sub I. I is either one or two. So Q1 is the quantity for firm one. Q2 is the quantity for firm two. Well, we assume and we're looking for quantities that are either zero or some positive number. I mean, choosing negative quantity makes no sense, right? So you either choose zero or some positive number. Um, you can never choose infinity. It's not a number to choose. So for that reason, the QIs for each I, uh, for each firm, is some non-negative number. So each firm is endowed with a cost function denoted by C sub I of QI. So each firm's cost depends only on its own quantity. All right, so these firms are two separate entities. So my quantity is not going to increase or decrease your cost. That's the uh, sort of basic assumptions. And each firm is facing the same demand curve. So that means these firms are actually producing identical products. All right. So if they were producing um, slightly differentiated product, well, then they might have uh, two different demand curves. All right. But here, the goods that they're producing is perf are, are perfect substitute. All right, so meaning they're producing exactly the same good and hence they're facing the same demand curve. All right, so what matters is that the total quantity supplied is equal to what firm one and firm two produces. So they're going to choose their quantities and then those quantities will determine what the market price should be. So a price higher than that price, uh, that, that market clearing price, you're not going to be able to sell all the quantities. If the price is lower than that, the demand is going to be more than supply. So therefore, we assume that the firms choose their quantities and then set the price according to the demand curve. All right. So they do not choose the price separately. All right. So the price is determined by the demand curve automatically once they choose the quantities. And then uh, the timing is simultaneous. All right. So what does that mean? That means firm one and firm two simultaneously and independently think about what quantity to choose. They choose their quantities. They produce those. And that's it. The game is over. Um, once so their, their quantities will be revealed to the market. So I produce this many you produce that many. And then we look at the demand curve given the total uh, demand. Well, there is the price. So we both will charge the same price. OK, so there is no competition in terms of pricing, only the quantities. So let me repeat the timing again. So each firm independently and uh, simultaneously choose their quantities. And then that's the end of the game. Those quantities will be revealed to the market. I mean, we will supply it to the market. And then the market demand will determine the price. So both firms will charge that price. And so they're going to get their profits and enjoy that profit. That's it. So this is one period game in a sense. We call it one shot game. So the next step, how do we solve this? I mean, what is the optimal uh, Q1 and Q2 levels. And as a result of this, what is going to be the market price? Okay, so how do we solve the Cournot model? Uh, pretty uh, sort of simple and straightforward. We find the what we call best reply functions. Okay, we will use this concept a lot in the next three chapters, I mean, including this one, the next three chapters, the oligopoly or duopoly and game theory um, and applications of game theory. Uh, the best reply function, the idea is that a player takes here, it's a firm, right? Um, a player, a firm takes the action or strategy of the opponent. 
So it's a guess, sorry. Right? So as a, as a player, as a firm, I make a guess about my opponent's strategies, like what quantity my opponent will be producing. And then I calculate uh, my optimal, my best strategy, given my belief, my, my guess about my opponent. All right, so let me repeat. The best reply, the idea is the following. Each firm will have a best reply function. And the way we find it is each firm takes the strategy of the opponent, the rival firm, given. So it's a, it's a guess. I, I guess about how many quantities, how much uh, output you're going to produce. Given that guess, I'm going to calculate what's the optimal, what's the best thing for me. It's like what quantity I should be producing if, if this is my guess. All right. Well, so what are we going to do with those best reply functions? It's going to come up in the next step. So first, let's calculate the best reply functions. Well, how do we do that? Well, simple. Start with one of the firms, say firm one. Okay. So what we do is we write down the profit function of the firm one. And it's always revenue minus cost. And the revenue is the price, which is P of total quantity supplied times the quantity firm one produces and then minus the cost C1 Q1. That's it. All right. So what is this PQ, by the way? Remember, this is P Q1 plus Q2. So this is total quantity times Q1 minus C1 Q1. And then therefore, the first order condition is going to uh, be you take the derivative with respect to Q1, set it equal to zero and solve for Q1. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to have del P del Q1 times Q1, all right, uh, plus, so this is the derivative of the demand curve times the quantity plus the derivative of quantity, which is one times the price. So I ignore the parentheses of, of, of P and minus the marginal cost del C1 del Q1 equals to zero. So basically the first order condition means del P del Q1 times Q1 plus P. This is not very much, but exactly the same as the monopoly. The only difference is that here the P not only depends on Q1, but also depends on Q2. So in that sense, the marginal revenue is pretty similar to the monopoly case equals, um, you know, this, this is marginal revenue of firm one equals to marginal cost of firm one, which is, which is del C1 del Q1. All right. So solve for Q1 and that's going to be a function of Q2. All right. So let's call it uh, Q1 uh, E. So I estimate, uh, I estimate uh, what quantity you choose and well, let's not put any E there. I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah, let's not put anything, uh, any superscript. So Q1. So if you solve this equality, you're going to get, so this is going to be a function of Q1 and Q2. I'm going to give a numerical example. So this is a generic solution. And if you solve that, you're going to get, so what does that mean? If you solve that, you basically put Q1 on the left hand side and send everything else to the right hand side. So the right hand side is going to have a, a Q2 and you know, bunch of uh, coefficients. And so what you're going to get is therefore the reaction function or the best reply function, all right? So best reply function, reaction function, or sometimes best response. Oops, response function. So they all mean the same thing. All right. So solve for Q1, Q2. So that's going to be a best response function. And then you do exactly the same thing for firm two. All right. I mean, you write down the profit of firm two. Once again, it's the price times Q2 minus C2, Q2. All right. So the first order conditions again is going to imply the del P del Q2 times Q2 plus uh, the derivative of Q2, which is one. So therefore P uh, 
minus marginal cost but equals zero, but I'm going to send the marginal cost to the other side, del C2, del Q2. All right, so if you solve this, solve for Q2, which means send Q2 to the left-hand side and everything else to the right-hand side. So what you're going to get is basically a function of Q1, all right? So we're going to call this the reaction function or best response function for firm two, all right? So after finding those best response functions, uh, we're going to draw them and, and then see how the, you know, the optimal Q1 and Q2 should be. So I'm going to solve this problem, the Cournot problem, through an example. 